Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. There has been some conversations around the changing of the VA claims process, specifically regarding some inquiries or demands uh, to some questions being asked from the Senate regarding how CNP exams are functioning. Now, I have my own kind of thoughts on this, and I wanted to wait here till Monday to kind of see if there was anything else that, that had come out. Uh, so instead of going directly to news reports or articles, I'm just going directly from the source. There's actually two pieces here that we can dive into. I'll start with the first one, which is the press release, but I also have a copy of the actual letter to the VA secretary, essentially calling the VA out on the process. Now, this is, I guess, potentially important, at least at the bottom line, at least there's a spotlight here for a minute. Now, look, is there going to be some real change? Don't know, right? It's a senator reaching out to the VA with a bunch of questions, and I can already see some of the answers. But let's dive into this and see if we can uncover any nuggets, turn over some rocks, see what we find, and see if there is a potential for some change. Now, look, I am not you know, saying the VA has it right. There's a lot of things the VA can do differently to make it, uh, I guess, an easier and less cumbersome process. Uh, so with that, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I truly appreciate it. Jumping into it here uh, is the headline. Now, I'm going to read the headline and then we'll dive a little further. Warren, so Senator Warren, calls out uh ineffectiveness of VA's privatized disability rating exams. What does that part mean? It means your CNP exam, where you go have that CNP exam, compensation and pension exam for your, typically your disability claim, right? Way more disability claims than pension claims. So you go see the doctor and uh, th this here is saying that it is privatized, which means that it's the contracted companies like QTC and so forth. So the ineffectiveness of privatized disability rating exams, so this is your CMP exams, pushes for review of private contractor service quality. Okay, so in a nutshell, the contractor companies aren't doing a great job, and we need to see um, some sort of a, um, a review of this. Now, again, I have the letter. I'm not going to bore you with it in this video. This here is the uh, press release from Senator Warren's office. Now, who knows? This might turn into something and other senators will jump on board and so forth. But right now, uh, this is where we're at. So moving on, we're going to dive through this. So Senator Elizabeth Warren wrote to the Department of Veterans Affairs calling out the failures of contracted veterans compensation and pension examinations following dis uh, disturbing reports of inadequate and unprofessional treatment of Massachusetts veterans at facilities in the state. Now, look, here's the thing. The senators from every state are going to always hammer home on their state constituency, right? The bottom line is, is that they are only really in... Um, influencing uh, federal agencies. So if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander, right? So if something were to take effect because of, in this case, uh, Massachusetts veterans uh, having issues uh, and there's some sort of change that takes effect, it would it would be a nationwide thing and, and all veterans win. So here's one way well, I'll dive into that in a minute. Let's move on. Senator Warren asked the VA a series of detailed questions about the VA's use of private contractors asking for a review of the waiting times for CNP exams, the quality of service that veterans receive during these examinations, and the Department of Affairs oversight of CNP vendors. CNP examinations help determine if a veteran has a service-connected disability so the VA can assign a disability rating and get them the benefits they are owed. For decades, disability claims included CNP exams including CMP exams were conducted almost exclusively by VA physicians, but 
By 2017, in an effort to provide some relief to a strained VA system, all regional offices were allowed to assign C&P exams to outside contractors. Over time, the VA shifted its disability exams casework almost completely to contractors. Okay, most of us are aware of that. Some of us are not. Used to be the VA only pretty much did uh, C&P exams. You know, you're, it, and it makes sense. However, budget concerns and all the other things uh, played into effect here in this change to add on contractors. Uh, into this um, role of CNP examiner. So moving on, today almost 90% of disability exams are performed by VA contractors. The increased reliance on contracted CNP exams did help address the backlog, increasing the number of completed examination scheduling requests by 69% between 2016 and 2022. However, several veterans recently submitted complaints and concerns to Senator Warren's office about the quality of contracted exams conducted in Massachusetts and across the country. For example, and then I'm going to give a, a, my little two cents here in a second. For example, veterans reported that contractor examiners failed to review service treatment records prior to their appointment and shredded medical questionnaires instead of adding them to medical files as evidence because they could not be added due to VA rules. Veterans also shared that they were directed to meet contractors for exams outside of medical facilities, including co-working offices, broom closets, and hotel rooms. Now, I've heard all of these as well um, for uh, veterans having to go to funky places to meet C&P examiners. Now, so far, what we're hearing here is... The CMP examination process may be funky, right, in a lot of situations. The biggest piece here that we've heard so far is that the examiners did not accept new evidence due to VA rules, not, not anything to do with the CMP examiner, okay? So this is not a CMP examiner issue. This is a VA rule issue, right, that the examiner cannot accept the new evidence. You would need to submit that into a portal uh, with the VA uh, or if the contractor uh, has one, but you can't just bring it to them. You can bring it to them to look at, to read, to help you, uh, but that VA rule uh, is an issue. The other piece is that uh, they, the VA, or the contractor, the CMP exam, uh, examiner um, contractor uh, failed to review service treatment records now this is a big one and I don't know I mean did the VA send them the uh, information needed the the um, treatment records or did they not so that'd be the first piece um, so in some cases the VA may screw up and not do that so that that's a good question there now does does there need to be work done? Yes. Let's move on and see if we can find out what else they're talking about because I want to give you my thoughts on this whole thing. So at the at the same time, veterans report having to wait 30 to 45 days or longer for their examinations to be completed compared to about 10 days for exams conducted by VA doctors at VA Boston. And at these exams may require the veteran to travel to multiple locations on different days to complete the exam. Constituents have also shared numerous heartbreaking reports describing the financial hardship, emotional pain, and stress that they endured when they experienced a denial or slow-moving appeal in cases where their exam was inadequate. These problems are not new. In 2019, a VA Office of Inspector General report identified several challenges faced by VA staff in overseeing the CMP program, including limitations with an electronic management system, a lack of reliable data, inadequate staffing, and inability to validate the completion of contractors requirements. While the Veterans Benefits Administration addressed most of the OIG's recommendations, they failed to address the quality of, con of contract CMP examiners. The IG has also found numerous issues with VA contracts that limited the agency's ability to hold contractors accountable for the problem. Furthermore, 
As recently as February 2024, the VAOIG found that the VA officials did not follow requirements to ensure contractor employee, employees were properly vetted, which may increase the risks to health, safety, and well-being of veterans and VA employees. All right. The CMP exam, again here, does two things, okay? They only mentioned one so far, which is that it helps them to decide whether the condition is service-connectable via the nexus, right? Is there really a nexus between your condition and your time in service? Cool, that's number one. Number two is the VA uses these CMP exams to also identify the appropriate rating, okay? If you don't have the specific verbiage in, in your evidence that you supplied to the VA, right, which, which just as a note, I always recommend that you work with your doctor to embed the correct verbiage into your treatment records so that way the VA has an easy time awarding you the appropriate percentage. Now, most people don't do that. They just, they go to their doctor, they get diagnosed, and then they move on their way, and then they file their claim, and the VA looks at it and goes, well, I don't even know what to rate this person. There's five rating options. We'll just say a 10, a 30, a 50, a 70, a 100. Uh, so we don't know where to where to rate this person. So we're going to have the CMP examiner ask specific questions so that way we can align it with our rating schedule so we can assign the appropriate rating. So that's the other thing that they do in these CMP exams. So let's move on in this a little further here. In November 2020, Senator Warren joined 10 other senators uh, in warning that the privatization of of disability exams would have long-term negative impacts on services and benefits to veterans, especially when the VA had no established process to evaluate the quality of contractor exams. Senator Warren is pushing for answers from the VA about the uh, eligibility requirements, license verification, training and resources, and assessment methods for CNP exam contractors by May 14th, 2024. So that's when they want answers. So Senator Warren is a longtime leader in fighting for the health and well-being of military um, veterans. Again, this is off of uh, off of her website. So it's always going to you know anytime you read any of the press releases off of any of these websites uh, f directly from an elected official, they are going to pat themselves on the back as much as they can uh, for future elections, right? So there's a, a whole host of bullet points here that I'm going to run through. Um, just to see if there's anything in there. Um, actually, I'm not. I'm not going to go through all the bullet points because now that I'm looking at them, it's just it's just all the pats on the back. You know, th these are the things that I've done for veterans or signed up for. So what I'm going to do though is I'm going to tell you that if, and there's many many of you out there, if you had problems with your CNP exam, the great ones that I hear is. Typically, they they didn't really ask me any questions. Um, they didn't. Ha I asked if they looked at my uh, records. Uh, they didn't. They said they didn't get any. And then the the best one is you know in my range of motion uh, exercise, right? Whether I had to move my knee or move my back or whatever, the examiner pushed on me and actually caused me more pain and damage. Uh, if you experienced any of these types of situations. My suggestion now is reach out to your senator, right? You got two of them in your state. Every state has two. Reach out to both of the senators in your state and let them know. Now, if you get enough of you, right, in every state saying this, uh, same information, including spouses, right? So if a spouse says, my, my spouse, my veteran spouse experienced this, uh, it's just, it's another tick mark, right? It's another number. What's going to happen is, is that we may actually get enough people on there to actually create some sort of a change. Right now, what we're looking at with this, in my opinion, and I know that there are some uh, workers in the elected government world that are on this channel, uh, as well as um, you know staffers and so forth. I also have uh, VA employees uh, that may even work in the... Um, 
liaison office for the for the congressional members and so forth. So anyway, this is what I see. So they want an answer by May 14th, 2024. The bottom line is, is that they want answers on, you know, the constituents' concerns of crappy CMP exams. Okay, well, the VA is probably going to take the position of, look, these are contractors. It's not us, first of all, right? So we're not bad. The VA is not bad. The VA is great. It's these contractors that, um, you know, created this bad experience for the veteran, and I'm sorry for that. Secondly, I'm sorry that uh, not every veteran is service connectable, and, you know, if they're not service connectable, oftentimes they're going to be upset, and uh, that is a real situation. Um, there's not much that the VA can do. Sure, they can tighten up the reins a little bit. They can uh, maybe require some sort of training uh, which will be what? It'll be some sort of an online module that you just kind of click through and answer some questions, right? So what I envision happening is the VA basically saying that, look, these are contractors. It's not the VA. Okay, so we're out of the out of the woods on this. But you know what? Thanks for bringing it to our attention. We are going to implement a, uh, a three-prong approach uh, to this problem. One is we're going to implement a better vetting system of the uh, contractors that we have come uh, on board with us here. That's uh, prong one. Prong two is we're going to have a module of uh, training for these folks so they understand how VA claims uh, work and the importance of the CMP exam. We're going to bolster that up a little bit. And then uh, lastly, we're going to work to ensure uh, that there is a uh, follow-up on uh, quality assurance with uh, with these uh, uh, contracted uh, uh, providers. And uh, that's what we're going to do here, Senator. And thank you so much for bringing this to our attention. And have a great day. So that's what I kind of envision happening with uh, regard to this. I, I think it's just going to kind of go up and then fall back down. And really, quite frankly, we're going to be in almost essentially the same situation. What can you do to combat it? Be prepared. Be prepared fully. Work. And when I say that, I don't mean be prepared just for your CMP exam. Be prepared for the whole claim process up front. Get all that evidence dialed in within your, uh, within your claim, right? Work to develop your claim and have, have it straight. Work the schedule of ratings. Make sure you're pulling out that information for the specific rating that you uh, would deserve. Get your doctor to ex essentially duplicate that same requirements into your medical records. Have them complete a DBQ for you as well, right? If you need a nexus letter, make sure that nexus letter is solid with rationale and put that all together in your claim. That way, when you get to the CMP exam, one, you already know what you need to say with regard to the schedule of ratings, and two, anything that's contrary can be backed up from other medical documentation from your provider in the event that you need to file a higher level review or a supplemental claim with a little more evidence. Remember that the VA is supposed to, they don't always get it right, but they are supposed to rule in your favor if the evidence is equal. If evidence is in equipose, they're supposed to rule in your favor. With that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.